Hello, we're talking about family systems theory, meet your family system. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at a tool that's been developed for many, many years that family therapists use called the genogram. The genogram is a chart. It's a graphic representation of a family and the nature of the relationships in that family. So I'm going to be showing you the symbols and the way in which you can construct your own family genogram. And then for those of you that are my students, we're going to be talking a little bit about completing the assignment that's a, that's a part of your course. So to begin, uh, let's, let's look at some of the symbols and how we go about doing that. On a genogram, squares are going to be the boys and circles are going to be the girls. A larger square is going to be the um, uh, adult, a smaller square or circle is going to be a child. So these are adults. Uh, for each individual on your genogram, uh, you're going to, well I should say, the person that is providing the information to the therapist is called the index person. And so in, what we do to represent that is we're going to draw a double line around that particular box. So if, if this were me providing information to you as my therapist, I would be double lined because I'm the person being interviewed. I'm the index person. The other thing we like to do is we like to put uh, a date up here uh, that shows uh, when the genogram information was given. That's good for you to have in your files because sometimes you'll come back and have a client come back a year or two or three years later and you've got that information. So for each person we have uh, guys, are guys are squares, girls are circles. We're going to put the person's name, uh, we'll say this guy's name is John, in the box, and we like to put the person's age in there. We'll say he is 40. The reason we do, I like to do ages versus date of birth, so you'll see some people that do date of birth, is then you've got to add that or subtract that in your head, and in therapy that's just, uh, you don't have time to be doing that. So you get the name of each person in here, and we'll say this is uh, Karen, and she's 38. A marriage line is a solid line going between one person and another. If they are engaged or they're cohabitating, we do that as a dash line between those two people. So solid line is marriage, dash line is cohabitating or engaged. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a little E there for engaged, so I know that, and then I'll put how long the engagement's been going on. So E6M would be E6 months. If a couple is separated when you're working with them, you're going to do one slash line in the middle of the marital line. If a couple is divorced, you're going to do two slash lines. And a lot of times I'll put M right here on the marital line and the number of years they were married. So if they were married seven years and they've been divorced one, that would tell you that information right there. So to go back and just simplify now, that's your marital line. Let's just make it a simple marriage and do a, do a solid line. We'll then drop down and we'll do children. Children go boys, girls, squares, and circles, um, uh, and they're going to go from oldest to youngest, uh, right to left. So let's say they've got a boy and a girl. We'll do this real simple. And let's say this is Mike and this is Lee. And Mike is five, and Lee is two. So this is a simple genogram indicating that you've got a family of four. John's 40, Karen's 38. We'll say they've been married for 11 years, and they've got two children. A boy that's older is Mike, and a little girl that's younger is, is two years of age. So that's how we show that. One of the things you'll want to do if you're a therapist and, and you're drawing genograms while you're interviewing people is 
uh, be aware sometimes you want to make this marital line a little bit longer because you never know how many children people have and they may start talking you may run out of space so uh, that line sometimes is helpful to make that a little longer the next thing we do is what I call tee up we add a T right here and a T right here Take my date over and we're going to add another generation this is her parents this is his parents and we can come down here and add uh, brothers and sisters brothers and sisters and their spouses as well and so that shows us now we have one two three generations that we're showing here all of these that I'm building for you are called structural lines these show who is related to whom these are all structural lines in just a moment we'll add some different kinds of lines to these uh, that are a little bit different from that I'll clean this up a little bit for you once again make this a little cleaner on her side if you've got an individual uh, that has uh, passed away someone's deceased uh, we show that with an X across that individual's box once again we're going to add names and ages to each one of these individuals and show though that so we add death there uh, over the box to show uh, twins for instance that could be shown with a Y those are twins to show um, a miscarriage or an abortion that is generally shown like that and you can add a date there if you like we like to put those on and we ask about those because that is a loss uh, that is a that is a grieving activity on the part of the the marriage or the the family so that's how you add particular uh, symbols for uh, children in that particular setting let's do multiple marriages for just a second because that's a real common question that we get and something you'll do on genograms quite a bit the way I like to do my genogram is I like to have the current marriage that I'm working with in therapy in the center I like to have that right in front of me and then I draw previous um, marriages and divorces out from there so let's say each one of them was married once before the way we'd show that would be Karen's former husband here let's say his name was David and he's 42 and we'll show a divorce line there and we'll show the number of years they were married and how long they've been divorced for John we'd come over here and we'd add his ex-wife and her name say is Judy and uh, she is 41 as well and how long they were married and how long they've been divorced if they had children from either one of those marriages you would add those children in here we then do and you can add prior marriages out if he was married once before that you'd put the first marriage here this would be the second this would be the current relationship that they're in oftentimes I'm asked what if someone cohabitated for an extended period of time do we show those yeah you'd want to because they tend to take on the nature of a permanent uh, relationship in that regard so we show those out I find that to be the easiest way for you to keep track and understand those as a therapist so these are all structural lines that we've been putting up um, the boys and the girls we've got one two three generations shown here and we're showing uh, the the structure of the extended family on both sides of the marriage the second kind of lines that we add to our genogram the second thing that the genogram can show is um, 
uh, emotional lines. So we have structural lines and we have emotional lines. This tells us who's related to whom. It doesn't tell us how people are related to one another. And so uh, we have a selection of lines that you can use as a therapist uh, to uh, show how people are in relationship to one another. For instance, let's say Mike has a, just a gen, or excuse me, John has a generally friendly relationship with his father-in-law, but it's not particularly close. So that would be one line. They get along, they see each other at Thanksgiving, how you doing, glad to see you, see you next year, and life is good. Let's say he has got a um, close relationship with his mother. And so they're, they're pretty tight. And, and, and they have a more intense, positive relationship. Let's say he's got a very, very strong relationship with both of his kids. That's shown with three lines. So the number of straight horizontal lines, one to three, shows the intensity of a positive relationship. Let's say that they, he and Karen have called you for marriage counseling because they're having some conflict. Conflict is a lightning bolt. So a conflict line looks like that. Shows there's some conflict going on between the people. Let's say they come in and they say, we've got a relationship that's a roller coaster. There are times it's wonderful and times it's awful, and we just bounce back and forth with each other. That's shown by taking a conflict line and we put a, we put a railroad track on it. So this is love-hate. I love you, but you drive me absolutely crazy. And it's up and it's down, it's back and it's forth. And so that railroad track uh, looks like that. Let's say people have a cool, distant relationship from each other. Mm, they just, uh, you know, don't really have much to do with each other. And let's say he had a cool, distant relationship with his uh, former mother-in-law. So we just look at that and we go, okay, there's not a close, we're just eyeballing that as a therapist, you know, he just doesn't have a real close relationship with his in-laws going on over there. You can kind of already see that. Um, One more. Let's say that there is a cutoff. Two people didn't have anything to do with one another. Something happened in the past. Uh, there was a big blow up, got our feelers hurt, and we just haven't had anything to do with one another. There's that cutoff, and that occurs sometimes. And so let's say that John and his dad were in business with each other, and things went south, and it didn't go well, and they had a big blow up, and as a result, uh, there was that cutoff relationship. And of course, looking at that as a therapist, since his dad is gone, I'd be interested in how he feels about that later on. So as you're constructing your genogram uh, for your clients, then uh, I like to see three generations. One, the current generation they're in, and kiddos that may be a part of that. I want to then be adding uh, as they're describing their relationships, I want to be adding those emotional lines there as well. Remember, as you're, as you're doing your uh, sessions, as you're doing your interviews with your clients, people are not going to lay out their life story in good chronological, organized fashion. They're going to give you a piece over here and a piece over here. They're going to forget about an entire marriage. They're going to leave out a relationship with someone. So you realize that the genogram kind of has to be constructed and reconstructed. And so I'll do one and I'll, I'll have it out and then I'll have to redo it as people tell me more information and things come up. The other thing that you can ask about in the genogram is you can ask about uh, major events. Things that have occurred in the life of this family or the extended family that have been either uh, positive or you want to listen for trauma. You want to listen for events that have been difficult and they've had to navigate. The other thing that I listen for is I'll listen for themes. I'll listen for themes. I'll listen for uh, the same kind of occurrence 
that's happened in the life of the family maybe over and over again. Carter and McGoldrick wrote uh, the classic work called Genograms and I recommend it to you if you're interested in really getting into this but they have genograms of famous families in there and uh, for instance the Kennedy genogram is in there and of course the theme within the Kennedy family is uh, of course the violent death of uh, young men and that occurs over and over again. I was doing the genogram a number of years ago and depression was a theme and we had five generations up there and there, there were five women through those five generations who all suffered from depression. So to review, as you're learning to do genograms, you're going to build your genogram. If you've never done one on yourself, I recommend you do that. Uh, you're going to have structural lines. You're going to have emotional lines, which show how people are related. You're going to listen for, uh, as a therapist, what are the key events that have shaped this family or are shaping it. And then you're going to be listening for certain themes that may have occurred in the life of this particular family. Now, for those of you that are doing this as an assignment for me, uh, in the course there's going to be instructions on how you do your chart, what the requirements are for that chart, and then there's going to be a series of questions that I'm going to ask you to answer uh, related to your genogram and as you learn doing that for other people as well. But this will provide you with a basic framework, not only for doing a genogram on yourself, but also using it and doing it with your clients.